Hello everyone and welcome back to part 6 of the new ship build series. In today's video we are going to be going ahead and connecting all the systems up to the bridge and getting all of that interlinked and working so that we can actually go ahead and actually go and drive the ship for the first time in the ocean, see how it performs and obviously what different systems we need to add to obviously stabilize it or make it faster or slower and so on and so forth. Along with that um, I'll go through a couple of the changes since the last video. First off, as you can see on the actual hull itself, uh, we've done a lot of detailing on the decks uh, by using paint blocks. So you can see the wood effect at the rear, uh, once again, just using paint blocks. Uh, quite simple, pretty easy, takes a lot of time, hence the reason why we haven't done it in the video. Along with that, we've also added the rear winch. Uh, now, I haven't connected it up to anything or put any controls in that for the, at the moment. We'll obviously do that in the video. Along with that, we've also gone ahead and fully decked out the whole bridge. Now, the bridge has got all the different controls that I need for the ship and different systems that I want to implement. I haven't actually connected any of those systems up yet. Um, however, we'll actually get into a little bit more of that in today's video. Along with that, you can also see on the front of the bow itself we've also added a bull bow now that is just going to be obviously to help the ship move forward a little bit and also we've also added two stabilizers on there connected to altimeters just so it makes sure it always forces the bow uh, down into the water so that um, it stays below the water level in sense so that all said uh, let's go ahead and get started now to start off I just wanted to go through the little bit of the bridge and what controls have actually added in there uh, so towards the rear of the bridge, you can see we obviously have our walkway going into the next level. Uh, along with that, on either side of the actual bridge, we have our thrusters controls. So on each panel, we'll obviously have a system to engage it. We also have port thrust and starboard thrust. So say, for example, we're next to the pier and we want to get closer, we can engage port thrust. Or if we want to get away from it, we'll go ahead and click the starboard thrust. Now, we'll get that all connected up in a video. Uh, moving forward a little bit, a little bit of paint detailing over there. We have the main helm itself just over here with a key switch, which is going to go ahead and enable it, speed sensor, and then a couple more dials and things on top there. We have our main electrical control panel. Now, this is going to get linked to the one down the bridge. This one is pretty much from our batteries. We have all our electrics coming into these different breakers and then going to the different systems. So by default, all of them are going to be on. However, you could turn them off if you wanted. So for example, we could turn the uh, access doors off. That means that these have no power anymore. And those are for all the doors for the whole ship. Along with that, we also have the battery meters and then we also have a low battery warning system just by using a threshold gate connected from the battery up to um, up to the threshold gate and then into that indication light. Along with that, the main controls here. So a couple more dials on either side. Uh, this side I want to do the weather and this side I want to do wind. Once again, we'll get that all connected up at some stage. First off on the left is going to be our navigation station. This is going to house our GPS system. Along with that, also have our hold speed system over here and also our positioning system so we can hold a certain GPS position. Uh, moving on to the central control panel. Central control panel is going to be a override or a all-in-one panel to control our engine room. So over here, we'll have our two switches. Uh, this will go ahead to start the engines for the propulsion and also start the engines for our electric generators. We also have the main uh, throttles, so port side, starboard side, increase, decrease, two switches to obviously go ahead and then also do reverse gears, our actual throttle readouts themselves. We also have speed, low RPS warning, low fuel warning that will connect to all the engines. So if any of them have a warning signal, we'll get a warning here. Along with that is we also have starboard fuel tank, or sorry, bow fuel tank and stern fuel tank. Obviously, we also have a manual to control all the pumps downstairs. And then over here is going to be our fog horns. Two different um, buttons for that. First one is just going to be simple on and off for the fog horn. And next off is going to be an approach warning where we'll be able to toggle a three short bursts on the fog horn. So for example, if something's in our way, we'll just give three, three short bursts of notice. So we'll get that hooked up to that button. And along with here, this is going to be our system controls. Uh, um, to do all our lights and all other radars and things like that. So we'll get that all linked up at some stage. Now, starting with the helm, what we're going to be doing is connecting that directly up to our rudders for the moment. Obviously, that will change as we add on different systems, but it's good to start with the basic stuff and then move on and change systems as you go on. So first off, what we want to do is we obviously have our AD. Now, AD is going to be connected to our steering. So we have two rudders at the bottom of the ship. So we're just going to go ahead and connect those off. 
Pretty simple, pretty easy. The next thing what we're going to be doing is going and connecting our actual throttle so we can control our throttle from this helm here. Now to do that, I'm just going to be using hotkey one and hotkey two, and that's gonna go ahead and control our different throttles over here. So you can see here we have poor throttle. Uh, let's go ahead, let's see here. There we go, throttle bottle increase. So one is going to be to increase both of those throttles together. And then two is gonna go ahead and decrease both of those throttles together. So, or we can go and click on the actual helm itself, go to one, make sure it's on push, two, make sure it's on push, and then go increase throttles. And this one will be decrease throttles. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Left, right, increase throttles, decrease throttles, nice and easy pretty simple to do. Now that takes care of our steering. The next thing is we obviously want to connect all of this panel up here. This is our main panel to control the engines. We need to connect that down to the engine room itself. So you can see here on the left side is going to be a propulsion engine starter. So we know that that's one, two, seven and eight engine. And then obviously our electrical engine, uh, electrical generator engine starter, which is going to be three, four, five and six. So we can go ahead and connect that up first. So we're gonna go take that bring it all the way down and we just want to go over to our starter one two and then three four so that's the starter button for that taken care of we want to go do the same thing for our engines that are controlling our generators so once again one two three and four fantastic that takes care of that so we actually can get our engines started We've also got all this taken care of. Uh, the next thing we want to do is link our throttles down to our engine bays. So we have our actual throttle values. So we can connect that off to our throttle. And we have another one for the other side of the engines. Perfect, that's taken care of. Great, and we also have our reverse. So we obviously need to change our actual gearboxes into reverse now to do that all we do is pretty much go ahead connect those buttons up to our two gearboxes that do our reverse for our whole propulsion system uh, pretty simple pretty easy as you can see we're just going to go ahead take that go all the way down into our engine room connect the first one up there and then we'll go do the same for the second one go ahead drag it up and bring it over to our reverse. The next thing we want to do is we have the pumps to engage all the pumps for the engines. So we'll go downstairs. Once again, external input for all the pump controls just over here. Great, so that's a key switch that's gonna go ahead and turn all the pumps on. I think we also need to go ahead and do ones for the actual main system pumps for the whole system. So we'll go ahead and connect that connector at the same time. So in theory, we don't actually even have to come down into the engine room itself. Everything will be taken care of for us up in the bridge section, which is pretty cool. Now, what else do we have to connect? So we have our two fuel tanks, so we can do that now. Bar fuel tank. Let's go down to here and we're just going to take over our fluid level. Perfect. And then we're going to go and do the same for our stern. All the way back down, grab our fluid level. Perfect. And that's going to output. Now, if you want, you could connect it up to the capacity and then that would tell you your capacity. And then you can go to the actual dial itself and set the, the max value and the minimum value. Obviously, minimum value is always going to be zero and then the max value you would take from that capacity reading itself. Now I think I've already got it down here. Yeah, so I know my bow fuel tank is 66,000 liters. So we can go ahead up to our bow fuel tank, 66,000 liters. And then the same for our stern tank is 30,000 liters. So we are gonna go over to that one and write 30,000 liters. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, we obviously have the next things we need to go ahead and connect is low fuel warning. Now low fuel warning, we've obviously already gone and done a whole system for that, where it's over here, it says bow low fuel and stern low fuel. So what we do is we go ahead and take a all block. So let's find that. Throw down an all block on the back side of this. And then we pretty much take the signals that we are originally sending. So you can see we are sending a signal here and we're sending a signal here and then we are going to take that and we're going to send it up to the main control panel and then that's going to tell us we have low fuel for either one of the tanks uh, which is going to be pretty useful the next thing is low rps warning now we can obviously if we wanted to we could take it from all these engines so what we would have to do is take the rps from each engine 
add it, uh, add it up together and then send it up there. So it's gonna be quite a lengthy thing to do. However, what you could do also is use an all switch. Now we already have our low RPS warning on each of these engines. So we could go connect a connect that um, signal over to an all block. We would obviously have to have quite a few of them and then they'll eventually go up to our actual signal. So I'm gonna do that later on, but not I'm not gonna do it live because it will take quite a while to do. Speeds, we'll get uh, speed sensors and all that set up later on. Uh, we also have, let's see what else we need to actually connect. So we have indication lights for our engines to be on, which is great. So we can go ahead and get that all connected up now. So now that we've got everything connected up in our bridge here for the engine controls, we obviously need to go ahead and just test to see if everything's working. Now, first off, we'll go over to our actual helm itself. Now you can see if we go left and right, you can see our actual rudders are turning. So that's working perfectly. The next thing we need to test out to see if our increase and decrease throttle is working. So increase, you can see that's working. And if we decrease it, fantastic go over to the main control panel itself uh, you can see that we've gone ahead and just connected our actual throttle values up to threshold gate to unlock these so when they're at 0.2 which is idle no clutches engaged it's gone ahead and unlocked our reverse gears so we can go ahead and toggle those on and then as soon as we increase throttle you can see they're closed so you can't actually go into reverse gear from there you need to be in the lowest possible throttle value now to set all this up we obviously need to engage our fuel tanks along with that is start our pit engines up engines all started working quite nicely we can obviously go into reverse gear if we want to along with that is we can increase the throttle either side and then we are now moving forward quite nice we can jump back into our helm itself and then control it if we wanted to from here so just a manual manual override obviously you could also control it if you want to by using the actual different throttles because it's the port side and this is the um, starboard side you could decrease this side which means then you can see the ship is now going to turn to the right because it's getting more propulsion on one side if you want to even get it to turn stronger you could go switch it into reverse then increase it and now you can see one propeller is going in reverse the other one is going forward and we are now spinning so you can in theory you don't even need to go to the helm you can control it all from here everything is taken care of pretty simple pretty easy all nice obviously our fuel tanks are, are reading out exactly what we need to our throttle values are here speed we haven't hooked up yet so the same with these sensors we haven't hooked up so with that all said uh let's go ahead and move on to our next part so the next thing we're going to be connecting in the bridge itself is going to be our left weather warning panel in the bridge itself. Now, as you can see, we have the rain humidity gauges. We also have a buzzer and an indicator light. Now, those are going to get directed connectly to the actual rain sensor that we have up on the roof itself, along with our humidity sensor directly to the gauge. Now, those report between 0 and 1. So, obviously, 0 is 0%, 1 is 100% rain or humidity, for example. Now, what we want to do is connect that up to our actual warning system. So, to do that, what we're going to do is grab two threshold gates. Now, these threshold gates are going to read the two sensors. So we'll place those two down there. So say, for example, this is going to be a humidity. If the humidity is between 0.6 and 1, so 60% and 100%, and same goes for the actual rain, then it's going to go ahead and send a signal. Now, those signals we want to then send into, because we only have one indicator and one buzzer, we obviously need to send into an OR gate. So we'll just take those two, connect those up to our different sensors, so rain sensor and humidity sensor just over there. Go into our OR gate, that OR gate is then going to go, we can go obviously if we want a solid beep and a solid uh, indicator light, we can connect directly up. However, I want it to obviously blink on and off. So we're just going to be using our simple logic block, the blinker itself, place it over there, connect that to the blinker, then connect those over to our buzzer and obviously to our indicator light. Set the timer, we're going to go for five seconds, five seconds, perfect. You could actually go ahead and test this. So I'll quickly just spawn this in. And now you can see because we don't have any weather activated, both the rain and the humidity are reading that we have 0%. We can then obviously go into our settings and check the weather and see if actually anything is changing. So we'll go ahead and hit the fog up to 100%. You can see that's now increasing. And now we get a constant beep and an alarm coming through saying, hey, there's, there's a lot of fog. Uh, and the same goes for the actual rain. So if we go to ahead and increase the rain up now, you can see the rain's going up and we're getting a warning system coming from the rain. So yeah, pretty little cool, uh, very little, little easy system to set up. Uh, so let's go ahead and move into our next section. 
Now moving on to our right side weather station or control panel. This is going to be to indicate our wind percentages and speeds and direction and so on and so forth. Now what I'm going to be using is a sub-assembly that's on the workshop. It's done by a creator called Tudgen. Uh, he's done quite a lot of logic stuff. Uh, I've used this system before on quite a few of my ships. It's a really good system so there's no point in making my own one. Now what it does, it sends your headwind, crosswind, wind direction and wind speed. As you can see, I've just actually imported his whole logic block here uh, and changed a couple of things on it. And we've gone ahead and connected that directly into our different sensors and also into our two different uh, or three different gauges over here. Now, obviously, we want to go ahead and set up our indication lights also. So if we have any of these that are over a certain amount, we want it to indicate lights. Now, to do that, uh, pretty simple. I'm going to just be using one threshold gate, so if the wind speed is going over a certain amount, that's what it's going to be measuring. So simple threshold gate, just connect it over there. We're going to find out which one of these are our wind speed, which is going to be this one over here. I'm going to connect that over to our threshold gate. Threshold gate is then going to go ahead and connect it to another OR block. Pretty simple. Connect that to over there, and then what we're going to be doing is overriding this panel taking that signal sending it to there then going back to our original panel there and that is then going to go ahead up and go to that so both stations are going to go set alarms off if either of them are, are having any indications on now obviously we need to set our threshold gate so if we say anything anything speed over five to 100 and never get to 100 but if anything goes over five uh, of a wind speed then it's going to go ahead and send our alarms off Pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm not going to test that out. Uh, it all seems to be working. So let's go ahead and move on to our next section. Now moving on to the next system, we obviously have our GPS uh, guidance system that we're going to be setting up. I'm not going to show you guys how to set this up. I have got a whole video covering it. I will link it up in the top right right now. So if you want to learn how to do that, just click on that video and you can watch it. The next thing we need to do is obviously going to be our bow and stern thrusters. As I said earlier, these controls here on the left and right side of the bridge itself, these are going to be to control the ship to move either to the left or to the right when we're at port. Now, in order to set this whole system up, the first thing we have is going to be a gauge that's going to tell us how far we are away from the actual port itself. Simple gauge with a red line, a white line. The red line is going to indicate the ship itself. The white line is going to be our distance sensor connected to it. So as we move closer, that line is going to go closer. So simply to connect that up, primary over to our distance sensor, nice and easy and simple. Now, the next thing we have is obviously a indication light to say that we have a um, we have something too close to us now we can do that say all we have to do is take a threshold gate place a threshold gate down below here that means that it's going to take that distance sensor and say hey if we're in between zero and let's say two meters or actually sorry yeah two meters which is eight blocks so actually quite high so let's drop down to one remember that distance sensor reads in meters which is four blocks is one meter uh, so if it's between zero and one so four blocks we're going to go ahead and send up a warning signal over to our let's go ahead and use a blinker same as how we did for our actual weather station itself go ahead connect that up to there and then that blinker is then going to go to our buzzer and it's going to go to our indication lights you say hey there's a warning we're going too close to something you can obviously set that up to whatever we want i'm going to do five seconds as i usually do along with that is the buzzer i go to warning one and i go to the highest pitch pretty simple pretty easy uh, the next thing we have on this control panel is obviously going to be our activation switch so obviously to engage the controls now First off, we want to go ahead and send that over to our indication light to say, hey, this panel is active. It's all working. No problem at all. We then go ahead and connect it to two and blocks. Now, the and blocks, how, they, how those are going to work is going to say, well, first off, we have our engage system controls. And it means that, for example, when you press the push button, it will only send a signal if you've got your engage um, control active. So it needs both of those to be on before it will actually send an on signal. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, we won't move any more on that in the sense of today. We also have a compass. We don't need to connect that. Uh, everything else seems to be connected here. We obviously have our RPS thrusters. Uh, so we can go down to our electric motors, which are down in the hull itself. We can do there is we can just take a simple off piece and we can connect a sensor on there so let's go and grab 
torque sensor, throw it on there, take the RPS sensor from that, and connect it over there. Pretty straightforward. Now, obviously, this is only going to be reading the front bow thrusters. It's not going to be reading the rear ones. If we want to, we could add another gauge here, or we could even add these two up together. So we could obviously find the um, total value of the RPS. However, I'm going to leave it like that for now. I might tweak it at some point. Now, it's in order to actually get the bow and stern thrusters to move, remember when we still when we originally built built the ship, we had it that. These, um, this electric motor here is powering the two front ones. The two front ones are facing opposite ways. Now I've changed it since then. I've made both of them face this direction. So if it goes, up, if it, the engine goes positively, it's going to send the ship going left. And now we have the opposite for the rear ones themselves. So what we need to do is we need to set up these two push buttons to either send a one or a minus one to these bow thrusters. Now in order to do that. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. What we do is we need two um, switch boxes. We'll go ahead and throw those switch boxes down there. Then your two push buttons are then going to go to, so we take them from the AND gates. Those are gonna go over to the switch boxes. So now when you have your first one, which is going to be to go to port, we want a positive one on the front one and a negative one on the other one. So what we go ahead and do is we take our first gate, got it all connected up. That's going to go ahead and control our thrusters. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a simple add block here. And I'll tell you the reason why is we obviously have two switch boxes for two different um, toggle buttons or push buttons. So we can get those connected up there. We need another one of those for the rear. Actually, no, we don't. We just need one. Go ahead, connect that up to our throttle over there. And then we want a inverted number for the rear one. Fantastic. So the opposite is going to happen in the front to what's happening in the rear. Fantastic. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, then what we need to do is actually on these switch boxes themselves, they need some numbers to actually work and happen. So we can go ahead over here drop this into a one, drop that into a negative one. So for example, what's going to happen is if we press the port thrust, it's going to go into our end gate. And gate is going to go ahead and activate this. It's then going to go ahead and take a number one, turn it on, send it through to here. It's then going to go ahead and take that, send it down into our front one, which is pushing us left. It's then going to invert the second one, which is going to make a minus one here, which is then also going to push us left. And then the same opposite, well, the same is going to go for the next one connected over here. This is going to get a minus one. When it's on, going to go into the gate, add, it to, add those two values up because we know we're going to be pushing them the same together. Then going to go into our different places. So it's going to send a negative one here. It's then going to send a positive one here because it's inverted. And then it's going to go ahead and push it all together. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, uh, nothing too crazy. What we can go ahead and do is actually go and test that out now and see how it works. So you can see we spawned it in. We're relatively close to the dock itself. You can see we're currently measuring that we are 5.96 meters away from the dock itself, moving a little bit further every second. Now you can see if we don't have this engaged, we can't actually move left and right. These systems don't work. We have to go ahead and engage the systems. Everything's turned on. We don't have a collision warning just yet. Now we can go ahead and engage port thrust. Now we should be moving closer to the dock itself. And we can continue going closer and closer and closer as we move on to the dock. See there, we're getting closer now. And we want to stop when we get our collision warning. And it means that we're way too close. I'm going to let it go there. Maybe do a little bit of starboard thrust. Fantastic. And now we're close. You can see we can go out. Perfect. Nice and docked right next to the actual dock itself. Um, pretty straightforward. Nice little system, guys. Obviously, you don't have to do a whole bunch of maneuvering. ranking. just do that until you want to get close to anything. So let's go ahead and move on to our next session. 
So next off, we're going to be doing the water cannons. Now, yes, the water cannons themselves, uh, I've gone ahead and done the piping for these. They're just going ahead straight into the ocean, grabbing it from six ports, going up three pipes, then get divided into two large pumps for each one of these actual fluid cannons themselves. And how we're going to wire this up is pretty so straightforward. Go over to the actual control panel here, do water cannon, water cannons, water cannon, one is going to be turn on, on gauge, engage pumps, engage pumps, fantastic, and then pretty much what we do is we go ahead and take one here, toggle it to the two different pumps, I'll do the same for the other side, and then what we do is on the actual helm itself, our WS is going to control our pitch, and then our A and D is going to control our swivel. Now you might have to invert these depending on how it reacts to your system. Don't forget to go ahead into the system and go and set these to sticky. Otherwise they will constantly reset, which you don't want. Make sure they're on sticky. And that's pretty much about it for the water cannon system. It's got its water, it's got its pumps, and it's got its actual fluids. All simple, pretty easy, straightforward to do. So the last thing I want to go ahead and talk about today, guys, is the fire prevention system down in the engine room or the sprinkler system itself. Now, how we've gone ahead and implemented it, pretty easy. Just use pipes with a couple of fluid nozzles over each one of these engines. Uh, I have a valve here, which is always on. Along with that is, you can see it's just coming from the ocean up into a fluid, into a large pump, and then out into the engine room itself. How we control that is that originally we did have our high um, temperature warnings on each of these engines. So we've gone ahead and taken each one of those uh, outputs already, gone ahead and connected them to our ore blocks, all blocks eventually have gone into our pump so if it reads that any one of these uh, engines are actually at a high temperature it's going to go ahead turn the system on and it's going to go and put the sprinklers and we're going to get water to put out the fires that's the way we do it at the moment until we have an ear sensor to actually read fires um, but yeah that's pretty much about it I, th I think we'll go ahead and end today's video there guys um, sorry for it being a little bit too long uh, but I thought I'd cover quite a lot of the actual controls and setting all that up for you so that all said, thank you very much for watching. As always, comment below what you'd like to see in any future videos. While you're there, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and then we'll see you in the next one.